It was a fun Saturday for, for Texas football. You go back to uh, uh, Texas, Arkansas being a, an old conference rivalry that uh, from the Southwest Conference that was a lot of fun for many years. And then to be able to see Coach Royal and Coach Broles walk out for the coin toss uh, brought a lot of history back to, to both Texas and Arkansas fans. And it was fun to see. And then we had uh, Tommy Nobis and Bobby Lane's jersey retirements at halftime uh, and uh, an outstanding win for us. Uh, because our guys played so hard and played excited and played well uh, that it uh, it just ended up being a great day for us. Uh, you look at the defense, they, they played well. There were seven sacks, 18 hits on the quarterback, 11 quarterback pressures. In fact, we're leading the nation right now with uh, uh, in sacks for four sacks per game. Um, that We only gave up three explosive plays. We'd like to, to still cut that down. Uh, but we uh, got them out 11 of 13 times on third down which was huge. We had two fourth down stops, uh, recovered a, a fumble that we knocked loose, and also intercepted a pass that uh, Aaron Williams ran back for a touchdown. Uh, the most productive players of the game defensively were Brian Arakpo and Sergio Kendall. They're both putting a lot of pressure on the quarterback and playing really well. The ball hawks, which mean they took the ball away in some fashion, they intercepted a pass, they knocked a fumble loose, they re recovered a fumble. Uh, there were uh, five of those this week. Uh, Brian Arakpo, uh, Ben Alexander recovered the fumble that Henry Melton uh, knocked loose. A.J. Williams, we've already talked about Aaron's interception for a touchdown, and uh, Curtis Brown. So those guys were all involved in, uh, in, in the Ball Hawk Award for the week, and the big hit of the week was uh, Brian Arakpo on the quarterback, on Casey Dick knocking the, the ball loose at uh, – uh, down near the goal line so we could get easy points. Offensively, the, one of the great things we're doing is, is uh, really good ball security. Our first team offense has given up one fumble and only the one interception after four games. Uh, second team, we've got to do a better job, but we're taking care of the football probably better than ever before, and we're scoring in the red zone. We, uh, we were six of six in red zone scores, ten explosive plays, and felt like the guys just stayed out there and, and continued to move uh, at a quick pace uh, offensively and, and put uh, Arkansas in the heat because it's hotter here than it is up in Fayetteville and, and actually wore them down throughout the game. Uh, really sad news that we lost Luke Tiemann. He was uh, on a kickoff and, and it was a non-contact uh, injury, uh, but he is out for the year and, and will be operated on soon. Uh, so we'll have to look at Chris Obana or Antoine Cobb coming off of his knee operation now and get him back involved because we did want to run some eye last week. It didn't come up very much, but uh, we've got to look at, uh, at what we do. Both the offense and the defense played really well the last five minutes of the half, uh, creating a turnover with the defense and scoring with the offense. And they did the same the first five minutes of the second half. And that's something that we've emphasized throughout the year because they came out and the offense scored immediately Defense had a three and out, and the offense uh, scored again. Um, you start looking at the Big 12 right now, three of the top five teams in the country are from the Big 12. It's just phenomenal what we're seeing. Six in the top 25, and we play five of those six, us being the other one. So we got a lot of fun ahead, and it starts this week with Colorado. Uh, let me also touch the kicking game. We, we feel like that we're improving each week there. Kickoff return was better again. Uh, Jonathan Gold had a 54-yard punt, and Trevor Gerland had a 51-yard punt. Uh, so the, both of those guys did a good job. Ryan Bailey uh, and Hunter uh, Lawrence uh, did a good job with extra points and field goals, and Justin Tucker continues to kick off well. But we do feel like that uh, um, the uh, non-conference games are over. Uh, it's an exciting time for us to go to Boulder. It'll be a night game. We do feel like the... Uh, uh, experience that we had out in El Paso will help us at night for a young team. Colorado's got a really good team. I'm sure they're disappointed in their game Saturday, but when a northern team or a western team uh, from a higher altitude goes to uh, Jacksonville, Florida and plays in September, now it's hot. So I would think that was a huge disadvantage for them, like it was for Arkansas. Our coaches that have coached up at Arkansas said they're up on a hill too. So uh, you start coming down off that mountain and, and come to the heat. It's a great advantage for for uh, southern teams to have northern teams and western teams come south. So I'm sure that was a factor. Questions? Coach, quarterback pressures are so important in college because of the spread. You really can't get the sacks. You guys are actually getting the sack numbers. Um, how, how do you feel about that going into conference where you have such a quarterback? Well, we're pleased that they're, they're, uh, 
they've had enough success with the quarterback sacks that they feel like now that it's a, uh, it's, it's a competition between them to see who can get there. And in so many cases, it, it's just been hard for anybody to get to a quarterback anymore. We've given up very few sacks, and they get discouraged. So they try to get pressures. Our guys right now are trying to get sacks, and therefore they're getting pressures. Coach, do you worry that you're putting too much? I mean, I'm, I'm not yes. Sure. <laughs> not that you're putting too much on, on Colt, but that he's absorbing too much. I mean, he's accounting for about 70% of your team's total offense. I mean, is that, is that, uh, is that way on you a little bit, that, that he's such an integral part that, that there aren't, you're not getting many other guys stepping no. up maybe? I don't know. Well, well, not at all, because if you look at it, he's touching the ball as, as a runner about eight times a game. And, and that's about what your quarterback's going to do. Four of those are scrambles. I think we had two quarterback sneaks Saturday, which are going to happen. Uh, he scrambles four or five times, then maybe we had two options. So we're not asking him to do a lot in the running game. He's doing it on his own because he's so confident and he's moving well. Uh, we're still running a lot of different running backs in there, and we're still trying to figure out who needs to be in there at what time. And Fozzie's been out of that mix because of his injury. So we, we still don't know. Um, how soon he'll be back, and, and he won't be back until he's full speed, obviously. Uh, but we really feel like that uh, uh, if you look at what Quan's doing, what Colt's doing, uh, there's a lot of guys involved with this offense right now. He's just a guy that touches the ball every time, and he's playing at as high a level as anybody in the country. Because you uh, maybe haven't Ladies needed, first. <laughs> needed Fozzie until this point winning like this? Is there an urgency now heading into Big 12 to – obviously you can't put him in before he's ready, but – well, like yes, what we've done is, is we play the guys who are most productive every day in practice and who are, who are healthy. And, and um, I see Cody Johnson getting so much better. We thought even though the numbers didn't look like it, Vondrell played his best game Saturday. Uh, Chris Obanai uh, does exactly what we ask him to do. He's just got more experience, so we've played some of the others more to get them experience. But he'll have to help now at fullback some and, and H-back. So he's, he's – uh, He's a brilliant young person, and he can do anything for us. So, um, But, you know, you're going to play the guys that practice the best, and so far that's what we've done. Back 80 of 100, are you asking Colt what happened to the other 20? I mean, well, I think the, that's, that's almost mine. It is. It, it's funny when, you, when you're at 80 percent and you wonder what happened to the other 20. Very honestly, some of them have been dropped. Uh, he's thrown some away because he was smart. And, and making sure that, that we didn't get a sack or, or coverage. But he's played uh, as near perfect as you can play, and I'm, I'm really proud of him. I think of the top five quarterbacks right now in passing efficiency, I think four are in the Big 12, which is, again, phenomenal. And that's why our teams are all rated in the, uh, in the top five and top, top 25 in the country from the Big 12. Coach, last year was the first time in a long time that your guys didn't play a good game the week before OU. How have you been able to kind of – I mean, that seems like it's not obviously an easy thing for, for young men to do is to look ahead to a game of that magnitude. How have you been able to keep them focused in, in years past? Well, we, we've won all of our Big 12 openers except for last year. So we, we've won 9 out of 10. And, and last year, very honestly, the team didn't play very well in the early, early part of the season. Uh, you go back and look at uh, uh, the opening ball game was a 21-13 game. Then we go down to uh, Central Florida, and uh, that one's 38-35. We, we were – working on onside kicks more than we were anything else. So uh, I've talked a little bit to this team about last year's team, and it's totally a different team with a different mindset and a different attitude. And uh, they've been fun. They've been competitive. Uh, we will coach them this week like they lost the game last weekend. It, it, it'll be a different week. People have been very critical of this team coming into the season, under the radar, all these question marks. Those question marks are still all there. So what we will and, – and the competition picks up. So what they have proven is each week they've, they've dominated the opponent, not just beaten them, which is good. Uh, but now we start uh, uh, with a higher level, level of uh, competition, uh, better caliber teams, and, and uh, it'll be interesting to see where we go. So they can't listen to how good people will talk about them this week any more than they did how poorly people talked in preseason. Colorado isn't one of those teams that's in that top five or the top 25, but they're still a good team. Is that to show – how big the, I mean, how good the Big 12 is getting overall this year? It is. Colorado has is, is only uh, had the one loss, uh, and they were down 24 to nothing and upset OU last week on this same weekend uh, in Boulder. So uh, they're doing a good job. They've got good players. They're well coached. Um, and and I, I think it's a good test for us this weekend. Coach, 